Rakshan Bani Etimad is an Iranian filmmaker well known in her own country and she's also a regular at European festivals. For this woman, who is also a women's rights activist, her country's main problem is understanding the real meaning of freedom. Recently, the filmmaker was part of a group of around 50 women who managed to get the Iranian parliament to back away from a draft family law that would have made polygamy easier. There are lots of men also who are against this law. I asked the deputies to vote on this law thinking of their role as fathers. Would they marry off their daughters under these conditions? The response of many of the deputies was silence. Tehran, the capital of the Islamic Republic of Iran, is home to 13 million people. Most of the population is under 35 years of age. In a country pulled between tradition and modernity, young Iranians have a need to affirm their existence. The underground musical group Gats Pat rehearses every Monday in a small basement, dreaming of one day giving an open-air concert in the capital. The group needs authorization from the Ministry of Culture to publish an album and play outdoors. The soloist Human says that since their music's very lively, they haven't got a chance. We cannot uh, see that we are young people. That they want us to be um, exactly wants, uh, what they want. So, um, and people here, uh, they are very. Mm, mm, I think uh, they, they need to um, uh, express themselves, and uh, so they mm, they they're not uh, feeling free here. So they decide to get out of here. On questions of fundamental freedoms and human rights, Iran is often criticized by Europe. But the country is in the world news because of the nuclear crisis. The international community is afraid that Iran is running a program to build nuclear weapons. Last July, the 27 countries of the European Union, under pressure from the United States, adopted new sanctions against Iran, in particular aimed at the big Iranian commercial bank Meli. Since several months ago, banking transactions between Europe and Iran have become very difficult. This has put many Iranian sectors in difficulty as far as doing business with Europe. Economist and editorialist with the reformist daily Samaye, Saiz Leilas, is convinced that the main problem of his country is the economy. The government really likes to show that the sanction is main reason of the economic problems. But they, they try to hide the mismanagement behind the economic sanction. And this is very interesting that United States authorities are helping them to show that. The, the amount of import of the country is five, six times more than 10 years ago. Do you believe that really there is economic sanction? Absolutely, I cannot believe it. The nuclear question weighs heavily on the dialogue between Europe and Iran. This summer, the EU proposed to Tehran a vast cooperation deal conditional on Iran's suspension of its uranium enrichment activities. But the country did not respond in the way the interlocutors had wanted. Recently visiting Brussels, Vice President Esfandia Rahim Mashai underlined that his country has the right to use nuclear energy peacefully for its economy. During all the years of cooperation with the International Atomic Energy Agency, we never had a negative report showing a deviation by the Islamic regime. Things are very clear. It's the others who must give a response. When there's been no deviation away from peaceful use of nuclear power by the Islamic regime, why should we have a political confrontation? The European Parliament remains divided about opening up a window of dialogue with the country. 
Die Sanktionspolitik, die die Europäer Due to the pressure of the Americans, the policy of sanctions is pushed massively forward by the Europeans. And that's completely counterproductive when we look at the region Iran is in, its security interests in regard to the question of terrorism in Afghanistan, and also in regard to the stability of the Caucasus region. Wouldn't it be wise to stop the threats of sanctions and to start a real dialogue? We are Iran immer wieder, was es versäumt dadurch, dass es We're always telling Iran what it is missing by not accepting the offer. If Iran were ready to overcome mistrust through transparency and through cooperation, then a whole range of possibilities to cooperate would open up. It's therefore up to the Iranian side to value their interests in the right sense and to open up to the offer expressed by the international community and the EU. The European Parliament insists on the importance of human rights, one of the EU's priorities as much as the nuclear question in its bilateral relations with Iran. In the coming months, in 2009, there will be presidential elections in Iran. The stakes are high between the conservatives, who represent the religious power of the state, and a more innovative wing. I believe that even though we express our preference, we should not interfere so as not to cause damage to the Reform Alliance. On their side, Iranians suffer from their negative image in Europe. This society with such a wealth of diversity is asking to be better understood by Europeans. There are different things in each country. Notably, they might imagine we're barbarians looking for trouble. The people have already suffered under boycotts during eight years of war. They had nothing to eat, but they could wait. In our religion, there is something called patience and prayer. The young Iranian population aspires legitimately to more space for freedom. Iran is far from the monolithic image portrayed in the West. Its complexity is not perceived in Europe, obsessed on the one hand with questions linked to Islamism and on the other nuclear fears. A lot remains to be done so that dialogue between Europe and Iran finally bears fruit.